Hello, world. Welcome to the Fonz's office. Today, old soup here. I know I've said it before, but today I really do have a super special guest, and I'm going to introduce him to the world right now. He is none other than Goldie himself, Mike Goldberg. Mike, soup. how are you? I'm good, buddy. Wait. Let's do it together. We want to do it. Here we go together. Let's do it in three, two, one. Here, Here we, we go. go. You do Absolutely. better than I do. You do Thank better than I do. It's a pleasure uh, to be on with you, Sue. Thank you very much. It's a uh, super pleasure right here as well. And the honor is mine. I appreciate you making some time out of your super busy schedule. I see you, what you did there. Yeah, my man, you <laughs> you have your fingers dabbled into absolutely everything over like the last 20 years or so. Yeah. Would you would you like to start off a little bit? Like the, you're most famous for that little organized and this is combat sports based, <laughs> that little organization known as the UFC. Uh you joined around Christmas time of 1997. Wow. Uh would you like to speak a little bit towards how that even came together? Absolutely, because you, as a fine Canadian boy, will appreciate it. I'm a hockey player. I think a lot of people know that if they've read anything, played hockey, started at five years old. I was actually, yeah. Soup, I was on the first American team. I was a peewee. I was on Team Ohio. I was on the first American team to play in, I want to say it might have been the Richmond Invitational back then, but it okay. was at four rinks. It wasn't even eight rinks yet. Yeah. It was four. And so we came from Ohio, first American team ever, and we billeted with the Sahat Chiefs. First game against North Van, we win. 3-1. Oh, this is all good. I have one of the goals. We go to the Sahat Chiefs' house. That day we go to the Burnaby Winter Club, and they're figure skating. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is going to be funny, right? We played Burnaby the next day. 14 nothing. No. Oh, hell yeah. And Sahat Chief skated like Paul Coffey. I'm like, wow. I look at my mom. I'm like, mom, like, let's get some figure skates going. Like these guys. And Cliffy Ronnie was on that team. I played against Cliff. Nice. Cliff was on that team. We're the same age. So it all started with hockey. And the reason it's pertinent to the UFC is because. I had done a ton of hockey. I played hockey, played in college, did some CCHA games of the week, IHL. Got my big break in the NHL in 1995 on ESPN. Correct. One of my producers at ESPN, may he rest in peace, one of my greatest, greatest, greatest friends, Bruce Connell, who passed a few years ago. If anybody ever watched a UFC, they heard me say about 267 times, tonight's show produced by Bruce Connell, directed right. by, so Brucey, uh, a couple of years into the ESPN world, he says, Goldie, Goldie, Goldie. That's how he always says, Goldie, Goldie, Goldie. I got a gift for you. It's in Japan. You got to take a jiu-jitsu class. I was just like, okay. I heard gig at Japan. And I said, I'm in. And it was a fluke. A guy named Bruce Beck, as you probably know, Soup. Bruce Beck was the announcer before me. And yes. Bruce, before I went to ESPN, I had the role at Sports Channel Chicago of play-by-play -play for the smaller conferences. And then sign sidelines and studio for the big boys like sideline for the bulls studio right. for the white Sox. well bruce beck did the same on msg in new york beck gets the job the weekend job at nbc the network station in new york city oh he's got his dream gig but he can't freelance anymore which takes us back to a hockey guy in bruce connell whose father scotty connell is on the mount rushmore of espn yeah putting espn here, Scotty Connell's the man. And, uh, you know, go to, go to, go to, got a gig for you. I almost got your voice on that one. Almost. You know, we got to take a jiu-jitsu class. It's in Japan. And that's how it started. I knew wow. nothing. Um, boss Rutten told me 20 years later, I still didn't know anything. But, you know, that's boss. And I think he was, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was kidding. I hope so. I was actually at Big John's uh, 50th. It was at the roast. And I nice. said, well, that's all right, boss, because I've known you 20 years. I still can't understand a word you say. So <laughs> you know, don't mess with the red here, boss. We're both there. So I went to Japan. And the first person I met, Soup, was Elaine McCarthy from okay. the SEG side. So this is pre-Zufa. This is SEG, as you know. And Elaine, I walked in, and Elaine was the director of operations, and she was giving me a little background. 
Okay, first of all, jujitsu, little guy yeah. ends on the bottom. How do you protect yourself? Thus, the guard, Elio Gracie, about 105 pounds soaking wet. And R is H in Portuguese. Never forget. Okay. R is H in Portuguese. It's not Royce. It's not no, Renzo. It's, it's Hoist. It's Henzo. Absolutely. And, and it all started from there. My partner, Jeff Blatnick, the Olympic gold medalist, um, lost him too young as well. Yeah. Man, it's, uh, it's amazing. We need to cherish our time. You and I were just talking yes. before we officially got, got started. You know, you got to take your blessings every day. Uh, Jeff taught me a ton. Big John taught me a ton. Um, about a half hour later, I'm in this big ass conference room soup and big John lays down on his back and I'm like, okay. He's like, get down here. And I'm like, well, well uh, first of all, I just met you. Secondly, you didn't buy me a drink. You haven't bought me dinner. We, we haven't even gone on a proper date. Get your ass down here. And he showed me guard, half guard mount, and put a little choke on me. And I've told this story many times, but of course I'll share it with you soon. Please, please do. Um, he gets me around the neck and yeah. he gets my chin and he like tugs a little bit. And I'm, I'm tapping like a motherfucker. Like, forget <laughs> I'm done. It is all over. And that's before I even said it's all over. Every time, and it must have been a thousand times, my shows with Joe, he would always say, oh, it hurts, but it's not under the chin. He won't tap. And I had have this flashback yeah, yeah. of Shin Yokohama, the, the Palace Hotel, wow. and Big John, like showing me kind of what a submission was like in the guard, that just kind of giving me the lay of the land. And, and John will always be a big brother to me, wow. um, a very honest and a very caring big brother to me, taught me a ton, Elaine yes. taught me a ton, some of my dearest friends. And the best part of it, as I'm learning on the job, Bob and Ellen Myrowitz, Myro was the owner at the time, they walk by this conference room soup and they see that new guy le literally learning on the floor. Right. And he didn't even have a date with Big John yet. <laughs> and they're like, we like this guy. And you know, 270 shows later, uh, the yeah. rest is history. Who would have known? Who would have known it would have uh, turned out to be what it has turned out to be? Not just, you know, my two decades with the UFC, which were absolutely magical. To be the soundtrack of, yeah. of the growth of that sport with a, a friend like Joe is, you know, I don't know how you top that. I, I hope to equal it in some of my new endeavors. Sure. But man, it's, uh, it's a great story. Just the UFC and MMA in itself. And yeah. to be there from the Bay St. Louis, Mississippi's to 8,000 at Skydome to Abu Dhabi and everywhere else yeah. around the world we've been, it's pretty darn crazy. Um, super like, crazy. I mean, super crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, Rory McDonald, Carlos Condit, right Absolutely. down the street from you. I and, watched uh, that fight. Rory was winning that fight, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, you I was were there. sitting close to me then. Yeah, so was I. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, of course you were. <laughs> man, he was winning. He was winning and Carlos finished him at the end. And, um, you know, and here's Rory still going strong, going to be in the, you know, the playoffs start the PFL and, you know, That's here's correct. Rory still yep. ready to go. So, um, yeah, it, it all started through hockey. And, uh, and by the way, my coach Ian Cushton uh, was on the 1958 Montreal Canadian Stanley Cup championship team. So nice. With nice. you with that Canada hat on, I get into it with my son all the time. We've got a picture like this. He's in his Canada gear. Very and cool. I'm with my U.S. gear and the World Juniors. We weren't supposed to win this year. We, as in Itazuni, but we did. Paul had to be very quiet. Um, but the best was 2010, the Olympics, of course. Sure. So we go in, it's Vancouver. Yeah. And Cole's got his USA jersey on, my son. He's 21 now. And we get off the plane and Grandma Mick, mom's side, Canadian, okay. brings out the Canada jersey. And that little shit right in front of me, bam! pulls off the USA jersey and puts on <laughs> his Canada jersey. I'm like, whoa, dude. Dad, I'm a Canadian. I'm like Brett Hall, dad. If they, if they screw me over up here, I'll play for the US. I'm like, you... And then we come back, to <laughs> We come back to watch the championship game because Cole had a game that Sunday and I was his coach. Okay. So we came back for the gold medal game. Yeah. We're sitting at the house and he's going, Lou... Lou. And I'm like, <laughs> you don't know how close you are to being like homeless at 10 years old, dude. And, and homeless in, in, in the just way, like, like <laughs> not living with me as in find another home. 
Exactly. Um, Lou, Lou, and then Parise, and you know, we tie it up, and then yeah. But and I love again, La, and, and Sid is a wonderful human being. Sure. I could have done without that goal in overtime. Uh, but I it couldn't. was a spectacular play. Exactly. <laughs> and uh and, and Cole is on your side. Um, but yeah, it's uh it, it's a fun rivalry to have, and Cole's pretty funny. He's like, Dad, I'm Canadian. I'm like, Cole, you were born in Atlanta. You know, mom's Canadian. I get it. We play hockey. We both love Canada. But last time I checked, bro, like, <laughs> you're American. Well, yeah, you don't know what I mean, Dad. So um, that's how it all came down. That's how it all came down. He sounds like a super cool kid. He is a great kid. He's and Both my kids are wonderful. And uh, you know what's the, the best for me with Cole Soup is that I grew up absolutely, and I still do. I, I My DNA is hockey. And uh, we'll, we'll get into... MMA and, and how that relates because I find other than Connor's behavior this last fight, which was not his normal win or lose behavior, and I'm a Connor fan, I'm a little disappointed in him like many others. Generally, when Connor is defeated, he accepts it and he accepts it with class. Yeah. But just it's not just about Connor, but take the buildup for a big fight. What happens at the end of that buildup? They shake hands, they, they hug, they talk it out. Okay, it's a microcosm of a seven-game playoff series, five games. It doesn't matter. What do you have? What's the greatest thing in hockey? Handshakes. Yeah. Handshakes. Yeah. And so hockey playoffs, handshakes, pronger, cross-checking in the back, trying to take out vertebrae three, four, and five. You're taking Shanahan and cross-check in the face yeah. because you know it's the cup. But at the end of it, as a hockey tradition, there's handshakes. Yeah. And, and that's the microcosm of mixed martial arts and I the agree. class of our athletes. And that's why I believe I've been able to make that transition. But where I'm so fortunate as a father is that my son not only played the game, played it very well, but more importantly, he loves it. And it's his life and it's his DNA right. like it is mine. And it's his mom's as well. You know, his mom's from British Columbia. Uh, figure skater actually competed against Tanya Harding like years ago, which is kind of funny. Wow. Uh, she didn't know it at the time, but the, like her mom had these old newspaper clippings and she remembers this little blonde thing beating her. And then they go, Oh wow, Tanya Harding, Portland. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Cole loved the game and still loves the game. We play men's league together and um, he doesn't pass to me much, but I realize it's because I'm generally still in the neutral zone when he's at the top of the circle. So, you know, sure. that would be a long drop pass and it would be offsides. Sure. But that's what really, really, as far as my son, that's where I was really blessed is the fact that he loves and has embraced the game as much as I do. And uh, that that's every hockey dad's dream come true. And uh, he is, uh, he's a good kid too. He's a good kid. Awesome. That, that, that's super awesome to hear. And uh, yeah, the shout out to you, my friend. Uh, Thank you. I, I'm, I'm uh, I, a father myself and uh, with my, uh, I have two daughters, one that's uh, in her twenties and another one that is uh, six years old. So I've got wow. that uh, spread there. With you got the, a good spread going. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the youngest is now uh, just getting interested into uh, mixed martial arts and uh, nice. uh, boxing and, and that kind of stuff. She's Very been watching cool. it uh, with me, uh, like boxing and, and pro wrestling. She'll watch with me and whatnot. Yeah. I, uh, when it comes to mixed martial arts and bare knuckle, I, uh, I don't really allow her to watch that with me because it does yeah. get a little bit more, uh, violent sure. as well as, uh, unexpected, uh, injuries that happen that could be very yeah. gruesome and could hurt her right her mentally everybody, for, for, yeah. Yeah. everybody forgets stuff. about Corey hill they talk about why yeah. or silva or connor they forget that the worst of them all was Corey yeah, hill's late when it went how old is your 20 year old 21 uh 22 23 this year all right so my daughter will be 24 in about five weeks nice and so about the same age and she's actually yeah. since covid hit she lives in new york city she's an actress she was out she's dual because of her mom Great. So she's rep by play management up in Canada yeah. and rep down in the States. She was up in with Andy Carey, if you will, North Vancouver for pilot season. Of course, right. when COVID hit North America, the first place it hit in the States 
See, I'm even working the states in for you, fine Canadian. Um, <laughs> so, it, it hit New York City. So Kiara's right. like, Dad, I don't know if you know I'm going to go home right now. We none of us knew that it was going to be what it's turned out to be. But Kiara has, for the most part, the last 15, 16 months, been living in North Van, been able to do a lot of the same things. Although production, like everything that we've been dealing with, is at a at a snail's pace. Uh, but equally as proud of my daughter as I am my son. She is a uh, soup. She's just off the charts, talented performer. And neither of our kids, we've really had to, to kind of put in the corner and smack around, quote unquote, not literally, but you yes. know, once in a while I had to give Cole a little kick in the ass, but that's just a dad and a son thing. Sure. But not getting out. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. But Kiara, as far as, her motivation and, and her dreams and going after it. I, I guess maybe she saw how hard her dad works and how great her mom is with people. And nice. she was able to take the best of both, but very, very proud of both of them. They are my, uh, they are my life and uh, the great relationship with a Brazilian um, right, right. named Silva, my wife, Silva. So yeah. uh, I've, I've kind of run the whole gamut here, Sue, but Kiara's not far from, uh, from you right now. Oh, and she just spent the long weekend up at Christina Lake and uh, did place. a little golfing, did a little scurfing, a little surf, a little this, a little that, and uh, nice. had a blast. Spent a lot of time up in Christina Lake. It is a beautiful place. It, it sure, it surely is. All of all of British Columbia is uh, oh, beautiful. really beautiful. I'm uh, I'm proud of uh, the province uh, and, and exploring wise. You, uh, oh. it's just a hop, skip, and a jump away from of beautiful exploration trails, uh, no matter where you're at. And you could be in the heart of Vancouver and uh, it's, you can it's go to amazing. Stanley Park. It's amazing. Like, yeah, well, I remember going, again, I can go all the way back to that Pee Wee tournament and I do have memories. And I want to say all the working women, we'll, we'll put it that way, were on Davie Street back then. We were kids, we were like 12. So the dads like took us up and down so we could see like <laughs> the, the, the on the job, <laughs> like just so you know, you know where I'm going here. I do, Davie I understand. Street. And Browski, my buddy, who I was telling you about off the air, yes. my best friend, Jeff Browski was my winger from Bantams on and our line is still one, two, three in high school and all time scoring. Wow. I'm seven points behind Brown. Wow. And I had mono my senior year, and I always tell Jeffrey, and I'll tell him again tonight after a couple of Crown and Cokes, I'll say, dude, you know, if I didn't miss those games, I'd be ahead of you. And Brow always comes back with, well, if I knew it was that close, he said, well, first his answer is, no, if you scored, I'd get the assist. Or if I scored, you'd have the assist, so the gap would have been the same. And my line is, if I knew I were seven points behind Brow, there's no way I was going to pass you the freaking buck. So we'll get that one out. We'll get that old story. And that's one of our Abbott and Costellos. We'll get that one. Pons out. We'll get that soup out of the way really quickly. Beautiful. He's coming to visit you tonight. Yeah, he's, he's, his parents live here now. And so uh, nice. he's coming over. He's, he's packing a bag. There's no driving tonight. We're just going to chill out, tell some old stories, and, uh, nice. and have some fun. Truly my best friend. And, um, yeah, I mean, between Brow with hockey and then – Brucey, who I lost, uh, who's a hockey player as much as he was, right. you know, the, the best television producer I've ever worked with. Sure. Everything seems to come back to uh, to the great sport of hockey, which I know you can relate and love. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, uh, hockey was my first uh, love for yep. sports uh, way back when uh, Peter Puck used to be Peter on. Puck. Now, oh, yeah. now, Scotty Connell, Bruce's father, yeah. came up with that concept. No. Yes. Yes. Wow. True story. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Scotty Connell. Came, yeah, how about that? Me too. Me That's too. super Because cool, I met Scotty. Man. I did an AHL All-Star game for ConCom. Because we yeah. watch UFC too, you just ConCom. Well, ConCom is Connell Communications. Sure. So in addition to ESPN, Scotty took the family and a lot of the families in the business. Tyler, his son, and I worked together at Bellator. Tyler's like a son to me. Uh, like a brother to me, both were very, very, very close. We played hockey together a couple of times on the pond in Hartford. And then we went to stick time when he was here. I got a hockey garage with plexiglass. We were out shooting pucks. His hands are bleeding. <laughs> it was awesome. It was that awesome. Is awesome. But yeah, yeah, Scotty came up with, uh, with Peter Puck. And then 90, 96, Fox was, yeah, Fox was doing hockey. So was ESPN. So I'm coming back and forth for the Vancouver Chicago series 
Right. And um, that was after the St. Louis series, which really St. Louis should have won. But Brendan Shanahan broke his ankle. That's the, I ended that's up meeting. One. Yep, I ended up meeting Tim, my ex, during that time. And then Shani was in Detroit when we were in Detroit with the Red Wings. And I always joke with Brendan. I go, you do know that Kim and I probably would not be together if you didn't break your ankle, because I wouldn't have had that extra week or two to like go back and forth to Vancouver yeah. to have some time together. But I'm coming across the border soup. And, you know, they're like, hey, what are you here for? I'm like, well, I'm here for the Vancouver Chicago series. And uh, he goes, oh, cool, cool, cool. Who are you with? And I said, I'm with ESPN. And uh, no word of a lie. The guy at the border goes, you're lucky. Because if you would have told me you were with Fox and that stupid glowing puck, I would have sent you right back home. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was a great line. It was yeah. great. And I'm like, no, sir, I'm not. I promise our puck does not go four rows into the stands. It's all good. <laughs> I I remember that too when that was out. And and yeah, you know, I I oh man, I couldn't believe there's that that uh uh yeah, what's the word? Uh the yeah, you get that, that initial well, you know, yeah, the, the initial spark of shock. It. Well, yeah. but after a, a Canadian, about a week of watching Canadian, it. You was a Canadian, like, a, a pure hockey fan in, in, in the country in which you live, and, in, in, you know, hockey is life. Yeah. So there's not as much need for those who watch CBC or TSN and the networks up north. You guys know where the puck is. What Fox was trying to do was to appeal to the masses and right. to get it to not just be a niche sport in the U.S. with the obviously the original six markets and then a handful of other really, really good hockey markets, but there were a lot of people who didn't care. Right. So I give them credit for that. And if you fast forward to the coverage of NASCAR on Fox and what they did, the bells and whistles with NASCAR, yeah. Yeah. it worked and it, it worked. worked brilliantly. Yeah, so absolutely. what didn't work in hockey did work in NASCAR, yes. and it was kind of the same concept. It just, you know, they couldn't get the puck from blowing and going into the third or fourth row. And for us real hockey fans, you know, it, it's too bad that back then we didn't have the capabilities we have now, Super, where you could have right. chosen, like, I want the glowing puck. I don't want the glowing puck. Right. Because the announcers were great. They, yeah, I mean, yeah. Everett and Clement were one of their top teams back then still. So th everything was good. The coverage was great. Um, that, you know, they explored with something, it didn't work, but yet they explored with it and it that, worked great in football and right. it definitely worked. When you think about NASCAR, you can definitely yeah. make the comparison that they did all these crazy things and graphics and all of that. And it did take it from the good old boys to, you know, a nationwide obsession yeah. with NASCAR. And, yeah. and, you know, and IndyCar had gone away a little bit. Tony George had the fight and NASCAR took over. So too early for the puck, but right time for, you know, the NASCAR circuit. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we, uh, when, when I initially started with this, I had mentioned about the, uh, the UFC contract coming around uh, yeah. Christmas time. And then uh, it was around the same time around Christmas time, I think uh, 2016. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, that that ended. Um, can I? I kind of just want to get a grasp from the family man aspect. Uh, how both ends of that contract affected you as a family? Like coming into that contract right around Christmas, and then right around Christmas, finding out that it was uh, now going to be uh, some free time coming up for you, so to speak. How how as a dad and as a husband and family man did that affect you in your regular life? Well. I, in 97, Kiara was four months old. She was four months in one day, September, October, November, three months. Yeah. Three months old and one day um, after I got the gig, the first UFC. Um, I would say back then, no, we didn't know what the heck was going on. Yeah, You know, my ex is half Japanese, so I was going to Japan and that was cool just in its own right, you know? Right, right. Um, and I was working with Brucey and everybody loved Brucey and we all knew each other and it was all of us hockey guys going and doing two dudes in their underwear, you know, fighting in a cage. That's right, pretty right. much what I knew at the time. Um, I, 
I was excited because I got to do stuff with Brucey. I got to go to Japan, but I had no idea, Soup. I, I didn't know what right. was going to be of it. I didn't know that all of a sudden it would define me. It would define my career as a combat sports announcer that I would be blessed to see the world because of the UFC. I would be blessed to be recognized by many and beloved by many. And I'm humbled by each and every one of them. Right. Um, people are like, oh, I hate to bother you. No, 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 no. The, the, nobody has ever bothered me to ask me for their time. They, they've honored me and they've made me feel really good about what I try to do. Right. And that is in combat sports, take care of the two Fs, the fighters, and the fans represent yeah. the fighters and entertain the fans. Right. So at that time, I didn't know. In 2016, you know, there's all this talk of the sale and 4.2 billion. Right. And That's... I'm thinking, why would you change anything? Joe and I have been a fixture for a long time, and it's only going to get better. And it couldn't have got much better, but it's only going to continue to grow. Um, my relationship with Lorenzo was solid 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 nice um i worked for i worked for lorenzo i frank lorenzo and dana for 15 right. years yeah um i was a victim of a budget cut as much as anything else and, and sure. that's what i think people soup don't understand is that um i'm the only one that people saw in their living rooms i'm yes. the ones people heard yeah i was one of about 125 130 people who were let go at the time Right. And I'm no more important than the merchandise manager or the social media supervisor who lost their jobs at the time. Tom yeah. Wright. You remember Tom Wright? Yes, was I do. commissioner of the CFL. Yeah. Well, Tom was running UFC Canada. Tom was let go at the same time I was, was let go. Yeah. Was. So I, I, I'd almost say I'm in pretty good company there because Tom Wright's about one of the coolest, classiest dudes you've ever met in your life. And he really um, is. He really is. I love yeah. Tom. And Tom, I love doing shows in Canada. Tom is just. He's just a gentleman. He's just a, a wonderful human being, smart gentleman. I worked for Todd Lightwicky. Seattle's going to kick ass because of Todd Lightwicky. Yeah, I yeah. worked for Todd at Orca Bay for a little bit, yep. but I worked for Todd with the Minnesota Wild. I was their first announcer as well. But um, so I was one of many. It was, um, it was a kick in the gut. And my yeah, mom, of been. all people, Soup, said, what's going to happen with the sale? What's gonna... And I was almost like, Mom, that's such a silly question. Like, why would you... Why would you break up Batman and Robin? Why would you break up the dynamic duo? Like Joe and I are good. Everybody seems to be happy and victim of your own success. Numbers don't lie, whatever it may have been. Um, they moved forward without me and it was, uh, it sucked. And it, it sure. really sucked. It sucked. And I knew it at Christmas. My last show was about four days after Christmas. It was That's Amanda right. beating Rhonda. Yeah. Um, the weird thing is that I knew and had like three shows left. Um, but I guess I'll pat myself on the back a little bit. I was classy enough to not do anything on the air that, you know, would have embarrassed them. But that said, at sure. the end of the day, I would have just been embarrassing myself, Soup. And yeah. I've been pretty good at staying classy over the last few years with the little roller coaster that's been in yeah. my career over the past couple of years. But yeah, it, more than anything, it was the relationships. It, it was sure. the relationships and the friends and the travel sure. and those times that that I missed. And yeah. uh, and then a year later, Brucey's gone. And I got angry then. I got angry because I felt like the last year of my time with Bruce was taken away. Now, the big man upstairs, like, we didn't know. No, how, nobody knew that, that we would lose Brucey at 60 one years old like nobody yeah. knew but that really hit me a year later soup it was sure. like because like wait okay i could have been with brucey with and now i lost that year yeah but again like we didn't know that um but i i'm still a fan i mean the first show i went to was the one in phoenix when they catch me like this in the stands yeah. <laughs> which was a total fluke because i just scooted down i sat it'd be like you were in the stand soup but i'm like dude you mind if i sit here and the guys were like, sure. And then they, holy shit, holy, yeah, you can sit here. And I see the like handheld camera. And yeah. I'm thinking they're just in break I because it was a Fox show. So I thought they were in break and like Bruce and Anthony saw me in the stands. And so they're saying hi to me from the truck. And I'm like this. I find out it goes on the air. Right. One in a million chance. Yeah. One in a million. <laughs> so Anthony Giordano, our director, he's so funny. He's like, Goldie, I almost got fired on the spot. 
the bat phone <laughs> rang. What the fuck? Why the hell is he on? Did you know? And, and Anthony's like, I had no idea. I took a crowd shot. It happened to be him. No idea. But Unreal. the truck just went cuckoo for a second. Oh, um, I bet. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was difficult. It was uh, it was very difficult um, because of the relationships. Sure. That's, that's for sure. You know, you, no. I mean, that's my family. I was with them right. for a very, very long time, nearly 20 years. Right. You spend almost uh, as much time on the road with them as you do with your own family at home. Sometimes in situations yeah. like COVID situations, uh, the COVID times are uh, even longer than yeah, with your own sure. family. So yeah. Um, yeah. We, we saw Joe Rogan uh, make his statement that uh, you guys will be lifelong friends, uh, that, uh, you know, that there was uh, nothing personally holds you in the highest regard. Um those, as that situation fell apart, though, uh, new things were falling together. Sure. And that's one of the things that uh, I like to focus on in these situations is that often when it, at times when we are sitting in our head, living in our head going, what the, what did I do? Yeah. Like, why is this happening? Um, often it is those times that are most challenging in here that something most wonderful is working itself into existence yes. out there. Yes. Um, and now this somewhat happened with you because it was only 11 months later, I believe, when you started broadcasting for Bellator. Even, um, even a little sooner. I think it was, uh, I think it was six. I think it was six. Was it it felt quick? like okay. 11. It sure. felt like maybe 11 years, too. Sure. Because <laughs> I saw Scott Coker yeah. in San Jose at a Sharks game, and I already knew what was up. And I think people in the industry kind of knew. And um, Coker said, we should talk. And I'm like, oh yeah, we should talk. Yeah. And I'm thinking we should talk with me and I'd be on Bellator's air January 15th. Well, we, we should talk turned into June. That was, a, it felt yeah. like, like you said, 11 months. It felt like 11 years. Like what? I thought we were supposed to talk. Like, <laughs> but I did, I started at Madison Square Garden on their pay-per-view. My first main event was Bader Davis to Right. The first one being inside yeah. the octagon. Yeah. Um, I remember I had a big, I had a big piece of paper said octagon with a X in it. Extra it. <laughs> and then Joe with an X in it. Not to say that. And then afterwards I asked Jimmy, I go, uh, Jimmy Smith, like, Jimmy, they call you Joe. He goes, Yeah, a couple of times. I go, only a couple. <laughs> he goes, a lot. I go, all right, all right, at least you're honest. At least you're honest. So yeah, so, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun. And, and the amazing thing is, is I go into that first. Bellator experience, right? And Chinzo Machida is on the card. He walks okay. in with okay. Leota. Yeah. Douglas Lima is on the card. Yes. He walks in with Diego. So I called Diego Lima in the UFC. Obviously, I called Leoto. Here comes Bader and Davis again. I mean, it's like it, it was really rewarding in a way that sure. I had become such a part of the fabric and the culture of MMA, not just the UFC, but of the sport of mixed martial arts, right. that I was really pumped and felt really, really good about things. And I'll never forget, Michael Chandler said to me, he said, welcome, he said, welcome to Bellator Goldie. I can't believe you're here. I am finally going to get to here. It is all over when I finish one of my fights. Yeah. And I'm like, and I've told Michael, a dozen times since that point, especially when he made the move over to the UFC and yeah. hit him up before, you know, his title fight in Bronx, you know, he earned the title. It was great. Yeah. I mean, Michael looked great early and he got caught he just like anybody can. Yeah. Um, but I've told Michael more than once that he does. I hope he realizes how much that meant to me that he was that excited for my voice to be on one of his fights. Yeah. And uh, that's how I was welcomed into Bellator. So it was pretty darn special. And then I got into the AJ McKee, Antonio McKee, and then I just right. felt old yeah. because I'm like, I called your dad's fights. And then sure. Kimbo may rest in peace. Here comes baby slice. I'm like, yeah. called your dad's fights. And I'm going, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're uh, seasoned. You're seasoned. Seasoned. They there even you better, go. even better soup. Even yeah. better. <laughs> you're a seasoned veteran. That's it. That'll, That's it. that'll like work. Dave Babbage. Yeah. Dave Babbage back in the day. Hey, my buddy uh, Shane McCarthy will appreciate you mentioning his name, Dave yes. Babbage. Yes. Yeah, yes. He's, Dave, is a, Dave is a great guy, and he's uh, 
uh, like yourself, a very approachable person and very yeah. uh, uh, just a genuine human being. So snuck me a uh, practice jersey back in 96 when we were doing the playoffs when I was with nice. the ESPN. Because awesome. um, when I was there for that Pee Wee tournament, the Flying V still existed. And sure. we were Flyers colors at home on the west side of Cleveland in North Olmstead. Right, so I right. went over, I grabbed a pair of Canucks gloves and I had the, you know, the yellow stripe, but it didn't matter. The rest was orange and black. Yeah. So I, had, I was sporting my Canucks gloves already. But yeah, Babbage was great. Talking to Babbage was awesome. But awesome. Um, your, your beard reminds me a little bit of Babbage's, I won't say entire oh, yeah. body because it sounds a little, yeah. Seriously, <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about it, you know, having a full sweater on when he took sure. off his jersey? Yeah, he's yeah. One of the hairiest dudes in the history of life but a genuine gentleman and uh you know and that was early on in my hockey days as well yeah um just getting started in the nhl and meeting people like dave babich are people that i'll never forget because of the way they made me feel very welcome as sure. a broadcaster in the game that i love so much yeah ab absolutely you got a, a interesting looking jersey there right behind oh you. yeah what what is that jersey that is jumbo joe baby Let's yeah do this right there, you there we go, so, Joe Thornton. Jumbo Joe, the man. So that's one of about three or four jumbos that we have. Nice. Jumbo years ago. Can I get the camera back good? Is that good angle still? Super yeah, no, that's great. Cool. You Perfect. got it. So I get Drew Remenda and I were always buds when I was doing hockey in UFC because Drew is a martial artist. And Drew was doing the Sharks. And I get this call before a Connor fight. It might even have been... Uh, yeah, I think it was a big Connor fight. It was, it was a huge fight. And he goes, uh, hey, Joe Thornton and some of the boys want to come to the show. They'll pay. Can you make it happen? I said, I do my best. And I nice. did. They came. And anybody who knows anything about hockey knows that Joe Thornton is one of the nicest human beings that God has ever created. He I've really met is. his mom and dad. I've talked to his father. And I know exactly where he got it. His dad is just a beaut. Yeah. And they're so sweet. And Jumbo was like, I'm going to repay you guys, like not pay you for tickets. I'm like, like right. I'm going to spoil you. And so they invited Cole and I to come out to San Jose. We go to Morton's. It's my, we had a UFC in San Jose. So we went a couple days early because the Sharks played on that Thursday. And my okay. mom came with me because Cole had to come back for a game. So we go to Morton's and Tom Holy, who's now director of uh, communications in Dallas, Tom Holy and Jumbo walk in to Morton's and it's myself, my mom, and Cole. Just like that. And I didn't meet Joe at the fight, but I had hooked him up and he came with Cooch, came with Pavs and uh, X and uh, Bernsey and JD, Jason Demers. Nice. They were all nice. there. And um, so we, they just, we just got along. And then we stayed the next day. We went to Morning Skate. Joe showed Cole all around the room, made sure that everybody signed his jersey. And then Cole and I skated in the afternoon against Drew and the video guy, and we played crossbar. Then nice. we got under the shark head, and we got pictures. Oh, it was awesome. like, yeah, oh, it, was, it was unbelievable. Right on. Unbelievable. And we, had done, we did it a half dozen times. And I always stayed in touch with Jumbo. Nice. Um, always stayed in touch with Jumbo. When, they, when he was at the last UFC, you know, he was behind – I don't know, the Crank Boys or whatever the, the heck those social media dudes were. And I text him, I go, hell with those guys. Jumbo's in the house. And he hits me back right away. Hell yeah. He loves Cole. He's been great to Cole. Um, and just truly become a friend. They did an article about him being no ordinary Joe the year they went to the Stanley Cup. Right. Big picture of Cole in it. And how he's been an influence on my son. We played in Silver Sticks when we were Bantams in San Jose. Nice. Jumbo came to a game. And in the second period, my son circled around. He had a little sauce. It was a sweet pass. A little sauce, and they scored. And Jumbo signed another jersey, and it said, Cole, nice apple. You look like me out there. Great job, bud. Love you, Joe. And I'm like, and I say it in the article, who signs a jersey like that? Who signs a jersey like that? Yeah. And Jumbo was there, came to watch his game, and uh, we'll be friends forever. They, that's we'll be friends phenomenal. Forever. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, what an experience for Cole as well, I, I imagine. And, hey, lifetime memory. For sure. And that little kid spoiled. I remember we were, yeah. 
we were in Vancouver. Vancouver was in town to play the Coyotes one time. And Cole was like, dad, we're going to the room, right? And I mean, like, Cole, do you realize that, like most people, like 99.9% .9 of the universe does not go down to the locker room after every single freaking game. He's like, come on, dad, I want to meet the twins. I'm like, you, you've never talked about the Sedins before tonight. Like what the, so we go down and I've known Murph forever. In fact, Murph was my sister-in-law's neighbor in North Van, but I've known Murph forever and ever. Dan Murphy, for people yes. who may not know, Dan Murphy's done Canucks and he's been national and sideline. Murph's a great, great human being. So I text Murph, Murph said, goalie, come on down. And um, he got to meet the twins and the whole bit. But uh, yeah, Cole, uh, Cole definitely has embraced it and enjoyed it. But the, the times with the Sharks, we're still, it's tough right now. It's tough, but uh, we're, we're still Sharks fans. And it's because of Joe, but it's also because of Brent Burns. We met, Bur I knew Burnsy in Minnesota as a rookie. Um, Pavs, unbelievable. Logan, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you go on down the list of the guys. I mean, we would go to lunch with them after morning skate. That's usually like nobody goes on that territory. No, like, yeah. You're not supposed to go. Tommy Wingles, when he was on the team, Tommy went to Miami of Ohio. I went to Miami of Ohio. Yeah. You know, we, we just had a great, great time. I remember one time, you'll appreciate this, Sue. We walked down to the room in San Jose after a morning practice, and Cole has his hurdle jersey on. So 48, okay. and he walks past Pabs, and Pabs is thinking he's got, because Cole's got every freaking jersey. Like, now he's got his freaking Donato. What do we do with that? Like, okay, Great. well, hang that in the closet. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, okay, like, Jumbo, he does have his Leafs jersey. You know, Auntie Carrie yeah. got him his 97 Leafs jersey, although that one's not framed. That's the one that's, you know, framed for us. Sure. Um, and Pabs goes to Cole's chest. He goes like this. Soupy goes, bam! Right, I just hurt myself. Right over the floor. <laughs> like, what the, what, what, what's that jersey called? Boom! He goes right over the floor, so it's just an eight in front. Oh, <laughs> He's nice. Like, We're the right jersey, kid. And so <laughs> Pabs was always great. Pabs came and talked to our team. And just wonderful memories. Uh, Todd McClellan was amazing. I mean, Drew's Drew. Drew's one of the coolest dudes ever and nice. a great broadcaster. Randy Hahn and I worked together at Sports Channel Chicago back in the early 90s. So I knew Randy from way yeah. back when. Um, Hedy's now doing TV there. I knew Hedy when he was a Vancouver Canuck, Brett Hedekin. Right. So, yeah, the, the, the Thornton jersey has a, a lot of stories and, and means a lot. What means the most in – I've said this to Joe – because I texted him when he signed in Toronto. And I understood, um, especially with COVID. And, you know, I, we don't know if he's going to play next year. Right, um, right. Mom and dad or mom and dad wouldn't have been able to come to any of the games if he was in San Jose. At least they had a chance being there in Ontario. If nothing else, they could see the grandkids because at least Joe was, you know, an hour away north of sure. the border. And um, I told him we were heartbroken. We were happy. Go get your cup, man. You deserve it. Right. And, uh we bleed teal and he said, wow, you guys will look good more and white too. Um, <laughs> but I did tell him like as a dad and he's a dad, how much it, it means to me, how he's treated Cole. Cause there are many times I was on the road soup and Cole would go down to the room and Jumbo would be like, get over here. What are you doing, dude? And uh, he texted, he just said, Cole is a wonderful young man. And it's been an absolute pleasure to see him grow up. And, uh, He's I'll, just, I'll be there in a moment. He's a joy to be around, and he's become such a mature man. And I love the kid. And I was just, as a dad, it, it, he could be in the Hall of Fame or not the Hall of Fame. He could have right. his two million assists or two. The things that he did to show character to my son and the way he treated him, because I've been blessed to meet a lot of these people. Super. Absolutely. So, the way that Jumbo has and always will be with Cole is uh, what makes it so very special and what nice. truly converted us into Sharks fans. Absolutely awesome. Earn that with me, Goldie. I, I really appreciate You don't mind me calling you Goldie, do you? No, if, if, you, if, if people say Mike, I, I generally don't answer. I'm like, okay, <laughs> perfect. That's the same saying? as if they say Jeff. When, yeah. uh, when I hear someone right? say, hey, soup, my right? ears just. Yeah, soup, you know. So, 
once in a while, I know the look from, like, I, I'm not Connor McDavid. I'm not Sid. I'm not Jumbo. But I, I know that. I'm not Rogan. But I know the look. People are like, I, I know you. Like, yeah, I know you. And I go, you watch UFC? Well, yeah. I go, you know Joe Rogan? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Goldie? And they're like, yeah, yeah. I go, I'm Goldie. And they go, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? So, like, I'm making this shit up. And then I go, here we go. And they're like, holy shit, you are. It really so, is Goldie. Yeah, it really is. So, yeah, it's pretty funny because I, I always use Joe first because he, sure. he is the magnet. You know, he's sure. the $100 million man. So, he he's the magnet. Now, you know Rogan? You know Goldie? Oh, oh, ah. yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, nice to meet you. And then we go from there. Yeah. yeah so, beautiful. Goldie, of course, I wouldn't expect anything else. With with uh, with mentioning that and with mentioning uh, Joe and whatnot, yeah. uh, your career in combat sports is now branching into a different avenue. We yes. saw you announcing, uh, co commentating on uh, the BYB Extreme Fighting Series, yes. right on BYB yeah. Five. That was your first uh, event. Six. BYB Six was yeah. your first event. Six, yeah, five. I was uh, a guest. Uh, you were guest there, down. right? Yep, right. I was a guest, and that's when I did the interview with Benny. Yes. Um, that what a was great a, guy, uh, hey, Benny uh, Ricardo. Oh, my God, what a funny dude, too. Oh, I bet. You want to talk about a guy who's done everything as well. Holy I'm going to try God. to contact him. You should. He's, I will. He's awesome. He's awesome. And um, and Paulie Malignaggi. I yeah. Mean, right? People are starting to say, hey, you guys could be the new dream team. You know, Paulie, Showtime went away for him. Yeah. Showtime actually kicked me in the ass too because yeah. Oro's full time there. So I did nothing wrong at Bellator. They just went to the wrong network for me to continue with them. Basically. But going back to what you said earlier. Okay. Um, Tony Orlando is, is a friend. He's a huge UFC fan. And I met an Uncle Tony and same thing, the way he treated my mom and same, same. But after that UFC, after UFC 207, I went upstairs and I was lost. I mean, I didn't like we we were down in the dressing room areas for an hour and a half, you know, okay. having a beer, crying, hugging, taking pictures, laughing, crying. And I finally walked up and I, I didn't really want to go out. I uh, met Uncle Tony and his son, John, and, and the family, my family at that point at the uh, sushi restaurant right up in the uh, I think we were at MGM. Okay. And um, Uncle Tony grabs me suit like this. He's a big Greek figure. And he says, Michael, I want you to remember one thing. You are the brand. The UFC rented you. The, your brand, your talent, you didn't leave it down there. You're bringing it with you and you're bringing it to the next place. And I was like, first of all, I'm like, holy shit, it's Tony Orlando who's saying yes. this to me. Um, you want to talk about it? Iconic. Um, but it super cheered me up. Now it didn't materialize right away, but he is right. He's right. Yeah. I, I didn't leave it there. And, no. and then like Coker would always say, he'd always say, well, Goldie, you're the voice of MMA. You're not the voice of the UFC. You're the voice of MMA. And now perhaps I become, yeah, the voice of combat yeah. sports. Yeah. Which is really what, what it's starting to look more like. And that's, what I would consider it, you know, humbly, but yep. um, yeah, Uncle Tony said, "Hey, you're the brand," and I've... um, that's that's where it went from there. And it, it took me, it took me a couple of years to get to what you mentioned earlier, Soup, and that is when a door closes, a better one could open. Right. Because Bellator was smooth, and I was having fun, and I was working with friends, and we were going to some cool places. Went to Tel Aviv three times, tons of shows in Ireland. Hung out with my buddies. Very close with John Cavanaugh. We had a lot of Guinness, a lot. I remember he, we're, I, he said, I had a couple of jammies. And he goes, we should get some proper number 12s. And I go, you know what? I love you. I love Connor. But in this country, I know that I'm coming over here to have a Jameson, not a proper number 12. And John Cavanaugh, <laughs> he goes, all right, don't tell Connor, but you're right. <laughs> it's all we did. <laughs> so I, that time was great. But then that one was, that one was, there's nothing I could do about it. Because, if right. we would have stayed at CBS Sports Network where we were before, I'd still be doing Bellator. Right. Then I meet Mike Vasquez. Yeah. How did that come apart? And started doing some stuff for Golden Boy. So 
Mel Valenzuela, who is a matchmaker, you actually had him on your show, which is how we got connected. Yes, Mel has been a matchmaker on many levels for a long time. Big John connected Mel and I. And um, BYB and Mike Vasquez showed some interest. I did a pilot for Golden Boy, Bally's Fight Night, which yes. was boxing and MMA. It was. I, it was. I think it's going to materialize into something pretty darn cool. I and hope Mel so. was the matchmaker for that as well. Oh, that Oscar's just... So I got Oscar in my life. I got George yeah. Galeos in my life. And then Mike Vasquez. So I go down there. And I also had the other organization reach out to me. Um, you know, Paige is fighting there. I love Paige. I know Paige. Austin, I know from Bellator. You know, there's a lot of cool things happening. Sure. And they invite me down for the show in May. And we hit it off. And, you know, here we go. And uh, BYB just came to fruition yeah. and now I'm feeling it. Like you mentioned earlier, yeah. Sue, now I'm feeling like I have a chance to go on another journey. And I've said this and I've told Mike, because I think bare knuckle is the next big thing. And I've had, if I've had one person ask me, I've had 50 people, a hundred people say, sure. does this remind you of the early days of the UFC? Two men will enter the octagon, only one will leave. Like right. bring back Tank Abbott, baby, David Tank Abbott. Yes. And I say, yes, it does. It does, and if I am really blessed to be the soundtrack of really the oldest form of combat sports, but becoming a worldwide phenomena, like the sport of mixed martial arts, if I'm able to go on this journey, man, you wanna talk about truly being blessed. So right now, those, those doors, it revolved with Bellator in a good way, yeah. but now I'm really like, I'm energized. I am energized, I'm fired up, I cannot believe then I'm getting a chance to work with Paulie because he's he's a fucking rock star on TV. He is. And he really is. I mean, he's, he is. he's two-time world champion, but he's been a he's network a, broadcaster for yeah. the past decade. And, and he's, he's been good. in there. Even, look, Joe talks about it. Yeah. Rogan talks about it all the time, how much he loves his commentary, how much he loves Paulie's commentary. So now I'm with him. I'm with Benny Ricardo, who knows his stuff. Dave Ryan and I shared time at ESPN. Rhino's hosting. It's awesome. It's awesome. And I'm really excited. But the real point of it is Mike Vasquez is a guy who has a vision and I want to do everything I can to be part yeah. of that part of the, let me be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Let's grow this together. And I've really like embraced it. Like production wise, how do we improve? Like right. how are our graphics going to be better? How are, let's get like, let's, let's bring on research guys that I know from the past. Like let's do this right. Because the market is open right now yeah. for someone to take over. And BKFC, Feldman's group, Dave's doing a good job, man. They are. A lot of my friends fight for it. Absolutely. But there's, there's, there's room for both of us. And that's really Absolutely. what you want. Absolutely. You want us both to have success because it's bare knuckle. It's, bare, it's crazy. I had uh, that Spencer Ruggieri yeah. on our last BYB, yeah. and you'll know. And he had that yeah. fight with Diaz, Davi Diaz, at BKFC. And I watched it for part of my prep for the show that I did. And right. I mentioned it on the air. And Diaz hits me on Instagram about what an honor it was, not only that I watched his fight, but I mentioned it. I can't believe you're a freaking legend, Goldie, you're talking about it. And you've talked to me long enough now, Soup, that I, like, I, I understand how blessed I've been and where I come from and what I've been able right. to do. But I don't walk around, you know, like no. with a fucking crown on my head. Right. But man, right. when fighters say something like that, it just, you know what it tells me? It tells me you're a pretty good dude and you've done it right. And just continue to do it right and everything's going to work itself out. And Man, that, uh, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. That's that's beautiful. And that, that's something that uh, I take as uh, super awesome advice for anybody that's out there that is yeah. considering uh, taking on any new challenges or continuing on or, or branching off into a new direction man, just uh, believe in yourself and uh, you can, you'll, you'll always uh, be surprised by uh, the amount of good that you can do if you just allow yourself to do it. Amen. And, yeah. you know, you and I shared, you know, part of your journey and you're an inspiration to me and you're an inspiration to everybody who comes in contact and you share that with. And, in the fact of what you've done for a living and, and working with, you know, kids with autism and right. special needs. I mean, right. 
So you're my hero, brother. And, I, and I'm oh, not kidding man. around. Like, that's a real fucking, that's a job right there, man. I mean, Thank you. I get to entertain everybody. But you're the one who gets to, to make them feel good every day. Make yeah. them feel good. Make them feel better. Make them feel normal. And, right. man. And you, you, you can't have enough of yous in this world. And I, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, too. And I'm going to say Jeff for that one. Yeah, I, I, I really do. I that. really do, Jeff. I'm not. Because yeah. I have friends who, you know, have children who have autism. And I've, I've been around it and I've seen it and I've talked to them and I've taken them to UFC locker rooms. And I've, sure. But not to the depth in which your work was. So God bless you and what you're doing as well, brother. I, I appreciate yeah. that so yeah. much, Mike. Like that. That does mean the world to me. Um, well, that you're was doing it right, brother. Thank you. It's a part of my life that I uh, I don't want to say that I'm proud of, but it, it's made me uh, a better person, right? Hey, man. Um, right. There, there. This interview isn't about me, but I will definitely just touch. Uh, everybody's had their past, sure. And and when I came out of my past. Uh, which was, uh, I was very lucky. I went through a three-year drug addiction and it was only three years long. That's why I say I was very lucky. Um, I experienced it. I, in that three years, I got to see the worst of the worst of what can come about from a person. And I had to find that inside of myself to fight out and get out of that. Um, I made a phone call to my doctor. I just laid it all on the line with him and they got me the right help. That help got me into a treatment center. That treatment center got me in touch with people that made me uh, realize that I was worth being around. And Amen. realizing that uh, helped me. It, it, it was two things. I was either going to go start working with people that were uh, addicted to drugs and try to help them or try sure. to help people that were uh, um, struggling from some form of uh uh, mental health challenges. Um, and it instantly led to a job that was in that field with special needs. And that uh, it's, it's made me appreciate life for what life is instead of for what I perceived life to be. And, and life is simple <laughs> if we allow it. Yeah. To be. And, and it can get complicated really quickly. It sure and can. we don't even know that we're allowing it to be so. Um, no. you know, I, 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 I can use the phrase that we've often used. Randy Couture would talk about it all the time. You know, it's not what happens to the man. It's what the man does when it happens to him. Yes. I mean, that, that's for Powerful. what you just shared and the story and the, and the journey that you've been on, it, it seems simplistic, but it is powerful, and it's the exact right thing to say about you, Jeff. It's not what happened to the man. It's what right. the man has done since. The greatest compliment that people give me is that, Goldie, you've never said anything bad about the UFC. You've never said anything bad about Bellator. You right. know, like, you're a class act, dude. Like, you're a full-on, like, or yeah. if I'm hanging out, like, you're, you're just a normal dude. You're a good guy. Well, first of all, I'm a hockey player. Secondly, what, <laughs> why, why would I? Yeah, why would I say, you know, I, I have reasons that I could be pissed about a hundred different things, but why would I go out and, and be that person. Because you know what that's going to do? It's going to cost me the 20 job opportunities that I didn't even know were potential opportunities. Because who wants to Bam. hire that asshole? Like, okay, yeah, Goldie, Goldie got a raw deal. People who think I got a raw deal or know I got a raw deal here, there, or anywhere. It could have been pre-UFC. could have been anywhere, anytime. That, that's fine. That, that can stay within the locker room. Like, keep it in, keep it in the sport. That stays in the room. Right. Outside the room, I don't want the I don't want the coach of the team that I might play for next to think that I'm you know that I'm a cancer in the room that I'm a troublemaker that I'm going to bring this team down. No, I want them to see like, wow, that dude's a class act, and he's yeah. going to bring energy and enthusiasm, and that's what Mike Vasquez has seen in me, and what I see nice. from Mike Vasquez and how yes. he treats his people. Yeah. So I'm I'm sitting. I, I just met Mike and. I went downstairs in the lobby of the hotel and he had about four people. Mel was there and there was a fighter who is because of weather his plane got diverted and came into Lauderdale instead of into Miami. Right. And they were trying to figure out how he was going to get there. And I knew Mike for five minutes. I was just kind of taking it in just wanted to say hello to what 
was going to potentially be my new boss. Right. And he goes, put him in an Uber. Here's my credit card. Like, forget the monetary part of it. It's just the, the instant reaction of, all right, it wasn't his fault. No big deal. Like, do we send a driver down? If right. we send a driver down by the time or up, if, you know, by the time they get to Lauderdale and back, traffic right now, just put him in Uber, put it on my card, get him an Uber black, get him down here. That's the kind of person he was. And that's right. the kind of person he is. And I'm like, man, that that's what I want to do now. I want to work for people like that. I want to work for people sure. at Golden Boy that I've come across. I, I want to work for Oscar De La Hoya. When we did that pilot, Soup, he walked around before we did the pilot with Sue Kim, the chairman of Bally's, <laughs> who's yeah. got more, like, more money than God. <laughs> God's got a lot of money last time I checked. Yeah. And, and he came up and met Trigger and I at the desk. And um, I mean, Oscar's like giving fist pumps to everybody. Let's kick ass. Let's kick yeah. ass. And the best thing about that show was really funny because I obviously him and Dana go at it all the time. Um, he's getting interviewed backstage by Holly Saunders. And Oscar said something about, you know, our octagon, like speaking of our MMA for Golden Boy. And he goes, wait, wait, wait. I guess I, I, guess I can't say that. That's my buddy Dana's combat, you know, cage. Right. We have a sex ago or something, but he yeah, was yeah. so classy and funny about it. He's like, yeah. wait, I, I guess I can't say that technically. <laughs> I was just like, and I'm just sitting at the desk listening to the interview, waiting for them to throw it back to Frank and I. Sure, sure. Frank Trigg was my partner. Yeah. It was just another awesome. awesome fighter. Yes, yes. Twinkle toes. Yeah. Twinkle toes. <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Used to hang him and Steve McKenna were really good buddies. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Remember Steve McKenna? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Played for us with the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, the Wild. They went to Pittsburgh. Comes in to, uh, back to the XL Energy Center. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm trying to think of the year. Yeah, I think, I think, Sid, yeah, Sid would have been there by then. Yeah, for sure. So um, he comes in, I do a pregame interview with him. And we're talking about the Minnesota days. And I go, right, Mac, I would be remiss if I did not ask you before we finish this interview do you mind, could you get, can I get an autograph? And he's like, Goldie, of course. I go, cool. Could you get me Malkin and Crosby? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, he just lost it. We cried. Oh, that's awesome. He was a funny dude. Him and Cam Stewart hung out all the time. Okay. They were like best buds. And Steve's like nine foot tall. Cam sure. is like four foot tall. <laughs> and they were freaking frack. And they were out trying to wheel chicks after the games because they were two oh, of the single man. dudes. And they failed a lot because they'd be at Tom Taki <laughs> City Pub, you know, at, at last call. So we knew that it didn't go well for him. Oh, or it right. did go well for him. I don't know. Yeah, but, depends uh, which yeah, side of the ball. Yeah, exactly. But I, yeah, yeah Mac, I got Mac because Mac was a jokester and always will be. But I got him. Like, yeah, can nice. I get an autograph? Of course, Goldie. Hi, hey, can you get me Malcolm and Crosby? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. That, that's something that I would pull on some point. Right. So. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, I, I want to transition into something here because not only have you uh, been a big fixture in the world of combat sports, yeah. in the world of sports itself, you've also been on the big screen. <laughs> yes. Here yeah. comes the boom. That was cool, man. Man, how was that for an experience? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Because Kevin James is such a cool dude, man. Right. He's such a good guy. And such a big fan. And I remember Kevin James said, like, I couldn't do a movie about MMA and the UFC and not have you and Joe in it. And I'm like, okay, the King of Queens said that. That Okay, that's pretty freaking that's cool. That's pretty cool. And Mark Delagrati, you know, who had a huge role in it. Crew yeah. Mark, that's my crew. Yeah. That's where I learned the majority of my Muay Thai is from Delagrati and Team Sikiltong. Nice. So... Cruz there, Boss to me was the star of the movie. Boss Rutten stole the show. Yeah, he's hilarious. And oh, he was just the best. And <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm in Boston. So I'm in Boston for about two weeks shooting our parts. And Joe comes in, he's got the flu. And I'm getting paid by the day, so it's okay. But I would go out, I'd have an early call. They'd take me out to, um, I think we were like in Amherst at some arena. And they had like blow up dolls in the seats. Kind of cool how they do it. Yeah. But then Joe didn't make it. Say so they'd send me home. Um, but I always had to, they always brought me out every 
Good morning. So I'm thinking, I'm going to be in the movie. I can't be like puffy eyed, chubby, hung over. Mm -hmm. But then I go hang out with Carol Alexis. And I'd be we'd like, oh man, have something to eat. Bruins were in the playoffs and uh, go to you want another one. I'm like, yes, but Alex, <laughs> man, what if, what if tomorrow's shoot day? Um, and uh, <laughs> so we, it was a couple of weeks of a, a lot of fun. Um, Salma Hayek is teeny, but really she what, is. and and you are in the Fonz's office. I will tell you this, meeting Henry Winkler. Yes. That was the best part of it all, of it all. Because my daughter is an actress. Okay. And people don't, quick story about Henry Winkler. Much like Rogan, Rogan never knew what Fear Factor was. Joe right. was a stand-up comedian. Joe wouldn't even have been in news radio if it weren't for his relationship with Phil Hartman. That's the Hartman. Right? Uh, yeah, it was Hartman. Soul too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, another one we lost way too young. Yeah. Joe and him were very, very close uh, coming up together at the comedy store. Right. And, and um, you know, this Bonds thing comes up and, and obviously it's iconic. And Henry was the, the Fonz. Hey. Yeah. After Happy Days went away, because he's a New Yorker and he's a thespian. Henry Winkler is a thespian. He Absolutely. could not get gigs on Broadway soup because people are like, how do we put the Fonz in? I, I'd say to kill a mockingbird, but I saw to kill a mockingbird with Kiara and Jeff Daniels was the lead. Right. As in right. Dumb and Dumber. So right. it's like, wait, yeah. or is it to kill a mockingbird? And oh, by the way, he was a dumb and dumber. But, and I remember reading that as a kid, like that Henry was frustrated by that. Sure. So I meet him, I talk to him, I told him about Kiara and her dreams. And he's like, wished her luck. Came back to shoot again, soup. About well, two or three weeks later, go to say hi to Henry. And he asked me right away, how is Kiara? Oh, Not wow. how is your daughter? Right. How is Kiara? And yeah. I was like, wow. What a true legend and a true gentleman. Nice. Everybody on the cast loved him, of yeah. course, because he was like, he was everybody's cuddly bear. He was grandpa, he was dad, he was uncle. But he, wow. Henry Wiggler is, he's awesome. He's yeah, I, absolutely awesome. I could just imagine, yeah. right? Like yeah. he's, he's uh, one of, when I was a child growing up, Happy Days was one of my favorite shows. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and the, there was no one like the Fonz on no. TV back then. He, Arthur uh, Fonzarelli, he, baby. That's absolutely, Arthur <laughs> Fonzarelli. He always got the girl. He oh, always, yeah, he, he was the coolest guy on TV. Um, when he jumped that shark on the water skis, <laughs> that was like absolutely <laughs> like I was blown away. <laughs> there was another two-parter. They, they made it a two-parter. You had to wait till the, the next week. It was the one with week. the motorcycle, like the Evil Knievel one. Yeah, the like Evil that, right? Knievel that one. one. That yep. was the other yep. one. Yeah, Jumping. See? Oh, yep. man. And, 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 and here's a little something. Like the Fonz, uh, what people might remember, those who are familiar with Happy Days, is that the Fonz used to hang out in Al's Diner all the time. Or in Arnold's, yes. depending which Arnold's, uh, correct, the, correct, the, the, right. the owner at that time. Yes. And when, when the Fonz conducted his business, he went into the bathroom and he kicked everybody out and the bathroom was his office. So, Oh, that's when, right. That's right. I remember that. You're right. Yes. Right. Yes. So yes. when, uh, when I came about, it was because I put a challenge out to a local regional uh, mixed martial arts organization called Battlefield Fight League. Okay. I put a, uh, a challenge out to them. Uh, I had been on unpaid disability. I couldn't afford to go to their shows. So I told them, you know, I'll wipe the floors. I'll, I'll clean the dressing rooms. Uh, I'll do whatever you guys need. Like, I need entrance. Um, that's, that's how it's yeah. done. Yeah. I, did, I wasn't hearing anything back from them. So I finally said, you know what? I've never had a tattoo before. I'll get a tattoo of your logo on my skin. And they bit. They said, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, for sure. So they paid for it. I got a tattoo right here. Battlefield Fight League, BFL. I love it. I love it. They had me cage side for the event. Uh, my wife and, and myself, they allowed me to put the belt on the Muay Thai champion that night. Uh, oh. I got to go into the cage. Uh, one of my one of my uh, my nephew's best friends, uh, his him and his brother uh, 
Stu DeLorme is uh, one of my nephew Greg's friends, and Cam DeLorme is Stu's brother. Cam DeLorme passed away, and uh, Battlefield Fight League had it up on their uh, inside of their cage, uh, his name on there. So I got to honor Cam uh, that night as well by uh, wow. paying my respect, and it was just phenomenal. So from that came the super fan character, and at that got point, it. I was a new parent, right? So. Right. I'm, I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find Henry, obviously. Oh, but yeah, okay. please continue. So yes. I'm 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 a brand new parent of a of a newborn, and right. we live in a one bedroom condo with a den, and her bedroom is the den. Um, so I had to Battlefield Fight League offered me some uh, opportunities to introduce some of their new fighters that they were signing, and to introduce some new matchups. And really? uh, the only place I could do that was inside the bathroom. And it just, it, no, I'm dead serious, man. And it just hit me <laughs> that I've got to call this the Fonz's office. Like that's where the coolest guy of in all of TV history did his uh, business. I'm doing my business, like <laughs> legit business, not the business in, in, in the bathroom. And yeah, the Fonz's office, man. That's how I got the name from that. And Oh, look at that. Henry look Winkler, that. dude, brother. Henry Winkler. Yeah, yeah, double baby. salutes to you, man. Bonds to the Fonz. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, my was alter ego. Mood. I was trying to find that for you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. The super fan's alter ego is indeed yeah. the Fonz. From and, the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> wow, and now man. that you say that, I think about that too. Reach bathroom. That's right. <laughs> it, it, Potsy, it, get over here. <laughs> he'd kick the door in and everybody out. That's right, <laughs> everybody that's right. splits and Joni yeah. loves Chachi. <laughs> yeah. Another another you bet. That was yeah. another good spin-off from there too. For sure. For awesome sure. times and uh <laughs> you know we got another, this all figured out, don't we? We sure do, we sure do. Another yeah. awesome time has been right now, Goldie, uh spending this time with you. Our time is coming to an end here. Uh we're going to have to, to sign out. My, uh, my time on uh, this recording is uh, definitely nearing its end. So, you know, okay. I, I'm, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to let us do it before I show you okay. your beautiful daughter because that would oh, be please, unfair if yes, I didn't. Please do. Here, let me make There's sure that we're on the... my angelic daughter. Oh, uh, wow, man. Yeah. She's, she's a good-looking oh. human being, so she yeah. must get her looks from her mother. Amen. <laughs> Dude, you got no argument from me. No argument from me. Oh, uh, that's that's Thank wonderful. God she, she dodged that bullet. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but before we do go, you you we've we've kind of joked about it. You've made mention of a couple of them. You've got some catchphrases that uh yeah. have uh the world knows you by. Here we go is one. Uh just like that is yeah. another one. Uh it's all over. Um none of those have the word super in it. Do you think that maybe you can fit the word super in for a bare knuckle? Hell yeah. Oh, man, that would yeah. be just phenomenal. Wait, wait, what do you think? Jeremy Escoboza, Rene White Boy Rodriguez. It is going to be a super main event, the finals of our 185-pound tournament. We will see you Saturday, September 11th, Inside the Trigon. Yeah. Now that. You do it in one take, brother. <laughs> super awesome. Hey, I'm, I'm going to send you uh, some of my footage that I do from BFL. Yeah. I was known that as. That would be cool. I'd like to see that, man. Yeah. For yeah. sure. For sure, yeah. I will. Uh, I'll send you my YouTube link because that's basically where I posted most of all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I'm, I'm worldwide famous in my own mind. For being the one take wonder, uh, trying to get things there done in one take, and that there just That's solidified this connection that I've been feeling go. with you. Yeah, yeah, man, this Amen. this this is super awesome. I've really enjoyed See, this. This is time. what it's all about, Soup. Is that it, I mean, we just shot the shit. We talked right. a lot of hockey. We talked right. a lot of what we have in common. Yeah. As we get closer to the card, let's do this again, and we'll really break down BYB. But I will leave your fans and i will leave Fonz's office with this i'm absolutely pumped about what is ahead of me right now and i'm as excited as i was 20 years ago 
with the UFC. And I didn't really know where that was going. And I guess in a, in a way, I don't know where this is going, but I have a feeling it's going in a similar place to what the sport of mixed martial arts has done over the past two decades. And yeah. I'm with people that I really respect and people that are really happy that I'm part of the team. And Absolutely. that's BYB and it's also Golden Boy. And I really hope the Bally's and Golden Boy thing happens and we do our Bally's fight night with the fight metrics and the different things yeah. because what an honor to work for Oscar and George Galejos and, and all the crew there and to be part of that, he's, he's freaking golden boy. I'm watching, yeah. I'm watching Olympics last night. And I'm like, you know, I, I said to uh, my wife, Fernanda, I'm like, hey, golden boy, see? That, oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Before it. his six world championships. Sure. Um, yeah, well, it's more than that probably. But just so you know, it's it. what you said earlier, you hit right on the head. It took a while, but uh, I've come around and I'm I'm motivated, Beautiful. man. It's the pedal to the metal, baby. And, awesome. Uh, Let's bring BYB. Let's bring BYB to beautiful BC. I would and love the Fonz, that. From the Fonz's office, the soup, the super fan is going to be my guest, and we're going to do an interview together. Let's make that happen, brother. I will happily make that happen with you guys. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm here at your guys' service. And uh, all we need is absolutely. your other arm to say BYB on it. Uh, you know, just another tattoo. No big deal. Hey, you know, there's, uh, I, I actually, this is going to be kind of funny because, uh, I actually put a challenge out to, 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 to fair Harris to, sorry, to defear Harris to yeah, die yeah. 5,000. Sure. I don't think he ever saw it, but I actually offered to shave my head bald and to shave in his hairdo yeah. on my, on my hair to, uh, uh, get one of my fighters that I swore that I sponsor up here in Canada onto his fight card. Nice. I don't think he ever saw it, but, uh, yeah, man, that uh, I'd be down for doing something crazy cool. like that. Dada's a cool dude, man. Dada's, Dada was, it's funny, Dada didn't know that Mike had invited me to the show. And all of a sudden, I'm cage side, and he's like, holy shit, what are you doing here? Oh, well, whoa, really? You might work with us? <laughs> like, that is yeah, awesome. Maybe. But that, Dada's, Dada's, he's very cool, and yeah. uh, he would love if you did that. He would love That, that was BYB5 that. that you were at. That It was, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. I got to ask, because uh, there's a buddy of mine that was on that fight card. He's got, I believe now, the fastest knockout in BYB's history, Jordan Iron Man Mitchell. Yes. He was fighting the guy called Iron Giant. It was Iron Man versus yes. Iron Giant. Yeah. And he came yeah, out and like, he smoked him. Yeah, he did. He, he yeah. the first hit landed five seconds. The guy was down. He got back up. I think he connected a one-two after that. That yeah. uh, that ended it. But, that would be uh, one of those. It is all over, just like that. Absolutely, it would be. Yeah, I can hardly guy, wait to my hear guy on that. that trip. Was JD Burns? Yeah, oh, right. What a yeah. fight was oh. that? Oh my god! And because I. A lot of the fighters were like, oh, Goldie, you say, what? What are you doing here? And I and I had a, like an extra moment to kind of bond with JD. And he had the pink hair going. And we're right there, Trigon side. And he's kind of getting the piss beat out of him in the early the on. Beginning the rounds. Yeah. And I'm kind of, super, I'm kind of going, I got to feel, I like, because now, like, the missus and I, we're like, we don't dislike the other fighter. We just don't know him yet. Right. But I'm thinking, this dude keeps getting up. Like he's going to come back. Yeah. He did. And now JD's fighting, you know, on the 11th, he's yes. on the next card. Yeah. And it was crazy because Stefan Bonder of all people posted something like a week later because they're teammates. And he said, JD Burns was just in perhaps the best fight that we've seen thus far in the resurgence of bare knuckle boxing, right? Bare knuckle battles. And if you don't believe it, just ask Goldie on TV. So the whole <laughs> world comes around. It sure, do, it sure yeah. does. It comes full circle, doesn't it? It does, it does my friend. Awesome. As has our time here come full yes. circle and a perfect segue Thank to you. now be able to say that I am the super fan and he is, it's, that's, I'm like you. I don't know which the side the heck you're <laughs> going to be on when it comes up as the final edit, but I am the super fan and he is Mike Goldberg. He is Goldie. And we are signing out from the Fonz's office. Hey.